USMLE Step 1 Sample Test Questions Block 2, Items 47 to 92 47. A 37-year-old woman has blurred double vision 8 hours after eating home-preserved peppers. 6 hours later, she has dysphagia, dry mouth and eyes, progressive weakness of the arms and legs, and urinary retention. She is awake and alert. Which of the following is the most likely mechanism of these adverse effects? A. Antagonism of muscarinic receptors. B. Antagonism of nicotinic receptors. C. Inhibition of acetylcholine release. D. Inhibition of cholinesterase activity. Or E. Inhibition of G protein. The answer is C. Inhibition of acetylcholine release. Botulinum toxin inhibits the release of acetylcholine, which activates the nicotinic receptors necessary for skeletal muscle contraction. Home canned or bottled food is a buzz term for botulism. That's also why the bottles you buy in the store have a pop-up lid that sticks out when you open it. If there's botulism forming air in the bottle, then the lid pops up, and therefore you shouldn't eat it. 48. Vascular control is studied in an intact hind extremity of an anesthetized experimental animal. After a normal control period, the blood flow to the extremity is completely occluded for one minute. When the occlusion is released, blood flow increases abruptly and exceeds the control value for several minutes, i.e. reactive hyperemia. After an appropriate recovery period, the procedure is repeated and the extremity is actively exercised during the occlusion period. Which of the following best describes the reactive hyperemia after the second occlusion compared with that after the first occlusion? A. Abolished B. Decreased but not abolished C. Increased or D. Unchanged The answer is C. Increased Blood flow also increases during exercise. The more anaerobic metabolism you use and lactate buildup you have, the more hyperemia you need to clear out the waste products. 49. A 70-year-old man is brought to the emergency department by his wife because of fever and shortness of breath for two days. He underwent an oral surgical procedure six weeks ago. His respirations are 22 per minute and blood pressure is 140 over 60. A soft diastolic murmur is heard. The diagnosis of bacterial endocarditis is made. Gentamicin therapy is initiated. This patient is at increased risk for developing which of the following as a result of this therapy. A. Cardiac ischemia. B. Hearing loss. C. Hyperglycemia. D. Lung infection, or E, torsades. The answer is B, hearing loss. Aminoglycoside antibiotics, gentamicin, amicacin, etc., are powerful antibiotics especially useful for bad grim negative infections. Bad side effects are permanent hearing loss, ototoxicity, and real failure. Both are important to know. Torsades, choice E, can be caused by fluoroquinolones, i.e. Cipro, as these drugs prolong the QT interval. 50. A 26-year-old woman is brought to the emergency department three hours after ingesting approximately 50 tablets of aspirin in a suicide attempt. She is nauseated, confused, and sleepy. Her pulse is 130 per minute, respirations are 30 per minute, and blood pressure is 100 over 60. Which of the following sets of laboratory values is most likely on evaluation of blood obtained before treatment? A. Increased serum bicarb, decreased arterial pH, and increased blood PCO2. B. Decreased serum bicarb, decreased arterial pH, and decreased blood PCO2. C. Increased serum bicarb, increased arterial pH, and decreased blood PCO2. D. Decreased serum bicarb, decreased arterial pH, 
and increase blood PCO2, or E, increase urine bicarb, increased arterial pH, and increased blood PCO2? The answer is B, decreased serum bicarb, decreased arterial pH, and decreased blood PCO2. Memorize aspirin's acid-base effects, metabolic acidosis, and respiratory alkalosis. Note, this is actually respiratory alkalosis, not simply normal respiratory compensation for metabolic acidosis. Signs and symptoms may range from mild nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, lethargy, tinnitus, and dizziness to severe symptoms such as seizure or cerebral edema depending on the dose consumed. 51. A 31-year-old woman comes to the physician because of a two-week history of malaise, nausea, vomiting, and decreased appetite. She is a known user of intravenous heroin. She appears chronically ill. She is 165 centimeters or 5 feet 5 inches tall and weighs 47 kilograms or 103 pounds. BMI is 17. Her temperature is 36.7 degrees Celsius or 98.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Pulse is 90 per minute. Respirations are 18 per minute. And blood pressure is 114 over 68. Physical examination shows scleral ictrus and a liver span of 16 centimeters. The spleen is not palpable. Serum studies show total bilirubin 3.2, AST 774, ALT 820, HIV antibody negative, hepatitis B surface antigen negative, hepatitis B surface antibody positive, anti-hepatitis B core antibody positive, hepatitis B DNA negative, anti-hepatitis C virus positive, Hepatitis C RNA, positive. Which of the following is the most likely outcome of this patient's infection? A, complete resolution of infection. B, latent infection with intermittent viremia. C, lifelong persistent infection. Or D, patient death from acute infection. The answer is C. Lifelong persistent infection. This patient has hepatitis, elevated liver enzymes, due to active hepatitis C infection. Hep C and HIV infection are both associated with intravenous drug use. While most patients with Hep A will clear the virus after their acute illness, Hep C causes chronic infection in 80% of patients, which may lead to cirrhosis over time, approximately 20 years. 52. A 12-year-old boy is brought to the physician by his mother because of a one-month history of pain below the left knee. His mother says he can usually walk around, but he hasn't been able to play in any of his soccer games since this all began. Examination of the left knee shows warmth, swelling, and tenderness. An x-ray of the knee is shown. Which of the following structures is attached to the abnormal anterior tibial area? A anterior cruciate ligament, B, gastrocnemius muscle, C, patellar ligament, D, popliteus muscle, E, posterior cruciate ligament, or F, soleus muscle. The answer is C, patellar ligament. Osgood's flatter disease is also known as apophysitis of the tibial tubercle. It's due to chronic stress and irritation at the insertion of the patellar ligament on the tibial tubercle. It's classically seen in teenagers doing repetitive vigorous activities such as running and jumping. The radiograph demonstrates classic fragmentation of the tibial tubercle, which isn't necessary to know to get the question correct. 53. A 31-year-old woman with type 2 diabetes mellitus comes to the physician because of an oozing, foul-smelling wound on her foot for two days. Physical examination shows a 4-centimeter necrotizing wound with a purplish-black discoloration over the heel. Crepitant bullae producing profuse amounts of serous drainage are seen. A gram stain of a tissue biopsy specimen shows gram-positive rods. 
the ca causal organism most likely produces which of the following virulence factors? A. Endotoxin B. Fimbriae C. Pneumolysin D. Polysaccharide capsule or E. Alpha toxin The answer is E. Alpha toxin. Gram positive rods in a diabetic foot wound or a World War I soldier fighting in a trench means Clostridium perfringes, the causative organism of gas gangrene. Crepidance means gas in the tissues, which is produced as a byproduct of its highly virulent alpha toxin. 54. A 64 year old man comes to the physician because of swelling in his feet for the past two years. He says that his skin is dry and itchy and his feet feel heavy. One of his legs is shown. Which of the following is the most likely cause of his condition? A. Arteriolar constriction and arteriolar hypertension. B. Arteriolar dilation and venous hypertension. C. Venous constriction and arteriolar constriction. D. Venous hypertension and incompetent valves. Or E. Venous hypertension and venous constriction. The answer is D. Venous hypertension and incompetent valves. The image shows varicose veins and the question describes symptomatic varicosities. Incompetent valves allow reflux of blood into the dependent feet and legs. The pooling blood increases hydrostatic pressure, causing edema. Severe long-standing varicose veins can also lead to venous eczema, skin thickening called lipodermatosclerosis, and ulceration. 55. A 55-year-old man is brought to the emergency department because of shortness of breath and confusion for four hours. He has hypertension and chronic kidney disease requiring hemodialysis. An EKG shows low voltage with electrical alternans. Physical examination is most likely to show which of the following findings. A. Blood pressure 85 over 60, pulse 120, increased JVP, and increased pulses paradoxus. B. Blood pressure 85 over 60, pulse 120, increased JVP, and normal pulses paradoxus. C. Blood pressure 85 over 60, pulse 120, JVP normal, and pulses paradoxus normal. D. Blood pressure 120 over 80, pulse 80, increased JVP, and increased pulses paradoxus. E. Blood pressure 120 over 80, pulse 80, normal JVP, and increased pulses paradoxus, or F, blood pressure 120 over 80, pulse 80, normal JVP, and normal pulses paradoxus. The answer is A, blood pressure 85 over 60, pulse 120, JVP increased, and pulses paradoxus increased. Electrical alternans on board exams means a big pericardial effusion, and usually cardiac tamponade. Fluid in the pericardial sac means the heart chambers cannot expand and fill properly, preload decreases, hypotension and tachycardia ensue, and the fluid backup leads to elevated JVP. 56. A patient being treated with clindamycin for aspiration pneumonia develops diarrhea. The stool contains a toxin that kills cultured epithelial cells. Stool culture grows an anaerobic gram-positive rod. The same organism is cultured from his bedpan. Which of the following is most likely to sterilize the bedpan? A. Boiling for 45 minutes. B. Exposure to benzalkonium chloride for one hour. C. Exposure to ethyl alcohol for one hour. D. Exposure to saturated steam at 121 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. Or E. Heating in an oven at 150 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. 
The answer is D, exposure to saturated steam at 121 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. Antibiotic-associated diarrhea caused by Clostridium difficile can be tenacious, difficult to treat, and even fatal. Alcohol-based rubs are not sufficient to kill the spores. Hand washing with soap is necessary and equipment should be autoclaved to clean it. 57. A 15-year-old girl who is a ballet dancer has not had a menstrual period for the past three months. Menses were previously regular at 29-day intervals. She has lost weight over the past year. Her weight is 70% of that expected for her height. She is afebrile and has purpuric lesions on her extremities and trunk. Platelet, absolute neutrophil, and lymphocyte counts are below the reference range. She has macrocytic anemia. The most likely cause of these symptoms is a deficiency of which of the following nutrients? A. Folic acid B. Iron C. Linoleic acid D. Magnesium E. Niacin F. Protein G. Vitamin A H. Vitamin B6 or pyridoxine I, vitamin C, J, vitamin D, K, vitamin E, L, vitamin K, or M, zinc. The answer is A, folic acid. Ballet dancers, or wrestlers, models, athletes who need to make weight, and particularly young women in general, are common patients with eating disorders on step one. Folic acid is involved in the production of both red and white blood cells. Remember, low folate leads to macrocytic anemia and hypersegmented neutrophils. B12 deficiency, not an answer choice here, leads to macrocytic anemia and neurological changes, including SCID, in severe cases. 58. An otherwise healthy 26-year-old woman has had petechiae on her legs during the last 24 hours. Laboratory studies show hemoglobin 13.1, hematocrit 39.7, leukocyte count 8,500, neutrophils 65%, lymphocytes 30%, monocytes 5%, mean corpuscular volume 82.2, platelet count 20,000. A peripheral blood smear shows normal red cell morphology. A bone marrow smear shows mature megakaryocytic hyperplasia. Which of the following is a most likely diagnosis? A. Acute megakaryocytic leukemia. B. Acute myelogenous leukemia. C. Aplastic anemia. D. Immune thrombocytopenic purpura. E. Epstein-Barr viral infection, F, Popova virus infection, or G, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura? The answer is D, immune thrombocytopenic purpura. ITP causes immune-mediated consumption of platelets, hence the low platelet count and petechiae. The bone marrow biopsy results given demonstrate that the body has appropriately increased platelet production meaning that this is not a platelet production issue. While TTP has a similar acronym, it's an entirely different disease, usually caused by autoantibodies that inhibit the enzyme ADAMTS13, a metalloprotease responsible for cleaving large moles of von Willebrand factor into smaller units. TTP has a classic pentad of thrombocytopenia, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, altered mental status, renal failure, and fever. 59. A 64-year-old man with non-Hodgkin lymphoma comes to the physician because of a three-week history of progressive numbness in his hands and feet and weakness in his legs when he stands. He received his third course of chemotherapy four weeks ago. Physical examination shows areflexia. Which of the following drugs is the most likely cause of these adverse effects? A. Bleomycin B. Cyclophosphamide, C. Cytarabine, D. Doxorubicin, 
E, pleural uracil, F, methotrexate, or G, vincristine? The answer is G, vincristine. Vincristine, a mitosis inhibitor, frequently causes peripheral neuropathy, which can be severe and irreversible. Other common chemotherapy associations are bleomycin with pulmonary fibrosis, cyclophosphamide with bladder cancer, and doxorubicin with dilated cardiomyopathy. 60. A 36-year-old man with profound intellectual disability is brought to the physician by staff at his facility because of increasing abdominal girth during the past two weeks. He is unable to speak and no medical history is currently available. Physical examination shows a protuberant abdomen with a fluid wave and shifting dullness. There are no signs of trauma to the area. Laboratory studies show no abnormalities. A CT scan of the abdomen is shown. Fluid is present in which of the following areas as indicated by the arrow? A. Epiploic foramen B. Gastrosplenic ligament C. Hepatorenal pouch of Morrison D. Omental bursa or lesser sac or E. Sulcus pericolicus. The answer is D. Omental bursa or lesser sac. The fluid collection with the near arrow pointed at it is contained in a space behind the stomach but in front of the retroperitoneal structures such as the pancreas. This area is known as the lesser sac or the omental bursa. It is connected with the greater sac by the omental foramen. 61. A 66-year-old man is brought to the emergency department by neighbors one hour after the sudden onset of progressive confusion and sleepiness. He had just seen the physician one week before, and he appeared cheerful and his usual sharp self until he was found wandering in his neighbor's yard the day of admission. He appears sleepy, but he is arousable. He is oriented to person, but not to place or time. He recalls two of three objects after five minutes. He says, there are so many little people here. What sort of place is this? He then falls back asleep. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient's condition? A. Acute paranoid schizophrenia. B. Arsenic poisoning. C. Dementia Alzheimer type. D. New medication regimen. Or E. Tertiary syphilis. The answer is D. New medication regimen. People in their 60s don't spontaneously become schizophrenic with any frequency for that to be ever the correct answer. Likewise, Alzheimer's is a slowly progressive cognitive decline associated with dementia, not an acute decline in mental status, i.e. delirium. This patient is delirious. Common causes of delirium in the elderly include medications, infections, and being in the hospital, particularly in the ICU. 62. A 30-year-old man is brought to the emergency department 30 minutes after being stung by several wasps. He is confused and has difficulty breathing. His temperature is 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, pulses 122 per minute, respirations are 34 per minute, and blood pressure is 80 over 40. Physical examination shows dry skin and decreased capillary refill. There are multiple erythematous inflamed marks on the back and one plus pitting edema of the ankles. In addition to the administration of 0.9% saline, the most appropriate next step in management is administration of which of the following? A. Atropine B. Captopril C. Epinephrine D. Losartan E. Methicoline or F, whole blood? The answer is C, epinephrine. Anaphylaxis is a serious allergic reaction that is rapid in onset. It typically causes one or more of the following, an itchy rash, throat or tongue swelling, shortness of breath, vomiting, lightheadedness, and low blood pressure. 
It is treated with epinephrine injection into a muscle, IV fluids, and sometimes with the addition of antihistamines and steroids. 63. A 42-year-old woman is brought to the emergency department because of double vision that began 20 minutes after she fell from her horse and landed on the left side of her face. Examination of the face shows ecchymoses over the left zygomatic arch. A CT scan of the head is shown. Which of the following arteries is at greatest risk for injury in this patient? A. Facial B. Frontal C. Infraorbital D. Lacrimal or E. Ophthalmic The answer is C. Infraorbital The CT head shown reveals a fracture of the left inferior orbital wall. The infraorbital artery is a branch off the maxillary artery that emerges through the infraorbital foramen just under the orbit of the eye and thus would be affected in an inferior orbital wall fracture. 64. Over one year, a study is conducted to assess the anti-leukemic activity of a new tyrosine kinase inhibitor in patients with chronic myeloid leukemia in blast crisis. All patients enrolled in the study are informed that they would be treated with the tyrosine kinase inhibitor. They are assigned to successive dose cohorts of 300 to 1,000 mg per day of the drug. Six to eight patients are assigned to each dose. Treatment efficacy is determined based on the results of complete blood counts and bone marrow assessments conducted regularly throughout the study. This study is best described as which of the following? A. Case control study. B. Crossover study. C. Open-labeled clinical trial, D, randomized clinical trial, or E, single-blind randomized controlled trial? The answer is C, open-labeled clinical trial. If you know you are getting a drug, then you are not blinded. It is an open-labeled trial. It is a clinical trial, though, since a new drug is being introduced. 65. A previously healthy 19-year-old woman comes to the physician because of a three-day history of fever, fatigue, and sore throat. She lives with a roommate who has a cat. Her temperature is 37.8 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Physical examination shows mildly tender cervical and submental adenopathy and pharyngitis. There is mild splenomegaly. Laboratory studies show hemoglobin 13.3, Hematocrit, 43, leukocyte count, 12,500, platelet count, 250,000, heterophile antibody titer, positive. The most likely cause of this patient's condition is infection with which of the following? A. Bartonella henselae, B. Cytomegalovirus, C. Epstein-Barr virus, D rhinovirus, or E, toxoplasma gondii? The answer is C, Epstein-Barr virus. Although A, cat scratch fever may be an appealing answer choice, sore throat, adenopathy, and a positive heterophile antibody test mean mononucleosis, i.e. mono, caused by Epstein-Barr virus. The heterophile antibody test is due to a cross-reaction with horse or sheep red blood cells which are agglutinated in vitro by the antibodies in the patient's serum. 66. A previously healthy three-month-old boy is brought to the physician because of a runny nose and a dry cough for two days. Physical examination shows tachypnea, a nasal discharge, and wheezing. An x-ray of the chest shows hyperexpansion but no infiltrates. The causal virus was most likely transmitted by which of the following routes? A. Blood transfusion. B. Ingestion of contaminated formula. C. Inoculation onto mucous membranes. D. Insect bite. Or E. Transplacental transfer. The answer is C. Inoculation onto mucous membranes. 
RSV, like all respiratory viruses, spreads via respiratory droplets. Babies are too young to wheeze because of asthma. They wheeze because of RSV. RSV is the most common cause of pneumonia and inflammation in the lower airways in babies. Asthma, on the other hand, is an ongoing disease caused by swelling in the airways in response to a certain trigger. 67. Six healthy subjects participate in a study of muscle metabolism during which hyperglycemia and hyperinsulinemia is induced. Muscle biopsy specimens obtained from the subjects during the resting state show significantly increased concentrations of malonyl-CoA. The increased malonyl-CoA concentration most likely directly inhibits which of the following processes in these subjects. A. Fatty acid oxidation. B. Fatty acid synthesis. C. Gluconeogenesis. D. Glycogenolysis. E. Glycolysis. Or F. Oxidative phosphorylation. The answer is A. Fatty acid oxidation. Malonyl CoA inhibits the rate limiting step in the beta oxidation of fatty acids. Logically, resting muscle requires less energy and thus less need for fatty acid breakdown than active muscle. 68. A six year old boy is brought to the physician by his parents because of a three day history of fever, headache, and cough productive of a green, foul smelling discharge that also exits from his nose. He has had repeated episodes of similar symptoms during the past four years. He appears pale and lethargic. His height and weight are both below the 10th percentile. Coarse ronchi are heard bilaterally. An x-ray of the chest shows scattered peripheral opacities, dilated and thickened airways consistent with bronchiectasis, and a cardiac apex that is directed toward the right. The most likely cause of his recurrent infections is a dysfunction of which of the following cell types. A. Alveolar capillary endothelial cell. B. Alveolar macrophage. C. Chondrocyte. D. Ciliated columnar epithelial cell. E. Clara cell. F. Goblet cell. G. Kulchitsky cell. H. Squamous epithelial cell. I. Type 1 pneumocyte, or J, type 2 pneumocyte? The answer is D, ciliated columnar epithelial cell. Recurrent respiratory infections could be a lot of things, but this question also mentions dextrocardia. Cartagener syndrome is a combination of situs inversus and defective cilia due to a mutation in the dynine motor protein where the inability to effectively clear secretions results in recurrent sinusitis and bronchiectasis. 69. A 23-year-old woman has a progressive increase in her serum beta-human chorionic gonadotropin, or beta-HCG, concentrations during an eight-week period. A hydatidiform mole is removed, but the beta-HCG concentration continues to increase. Which of the following is a most likely diagnosis? A. Adrenal adenoma B. Choriocarcinoma C. Ectopic pregnancy D. Pituitary insufficiency or E. A second non-invasive mole The answer is B. Choriocarcinoma Choriocarcinoma is a much feared complication of a molar pregnancy. It is a cancer of the beta HCG producing syncytiotropoblasts found in the placenta. 70. A 45 year old man has abnormal circadian variation in body temperature, disruption of the sleep wake cycle, and an impaired nocturnal surge of secretion of melatonin. An MRI of the brain is most likely to show a lesion involving which of the following nuclei? A. Accessory optic B. 
lateral preoptic, C, pretectal, D, suprachiasmatic, or E, supraoptic. The answer is D, suprachiasmatic. The suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus controls circadian rhythms. A few more key thalamic nuclei are worth noting. Superoptic releases vasopressin, or ADH. The lateral nucleus controls thirst and hunger. The ventromedial controls satiety. Anterior controls temperature. The paraventricular nucleus releases CRH, TRH, and oxytocin. 71. A 75-year-old woman has increasing shortness of breath on exertion. Findings on physical examination are unremarkable. X-rays of the chest show no abnormalities of the heart or lungs. Pertinent laboratory findings include hematocrit 28, hemoglobin 9, mean corpuscular volume 70. Which of the following is the most likely basis for these findings? A. Acquired hemolytic anemia B. Chronic blood loss C. Folic acid deficiency D. Beta thalassemia minor or E. Pernicious anemia The answer is B. Chronic blood loss. This patient has symptomatic anemia. Its microcytic nature implies iron deficiency, which is most commonly due to occult blood loss. In the elderly, the concern is colon cancer. In a reproductive age female, iron deficiency is more commonly secondary to uterine pathology. 72. A 42-year-old woman is brought to the emergency department four hours after the onset of severe shortness of breath. She has no recent history of trauma, hospital admission, or operations. She had an episode of DVT 10 years ago that required treatment in the hospital. Her respirations are 34 per minute. Pulse oximetry on room air shows an oxygen saturation of 65%. A helical CT scan shows a large filling defect in the right pulmonary artery. Which of the following hypercoagulability disorders is most likely underlying cause of these findings? A. Antiplatelet antibody syndrome B. Antithrombin 3 deficiency C. Factor V Leiden mutation, D, protein C deficiency, or E, protein S deficiency. The answer is C, Factor V Leiden mutation. Factor V Leiden is by far the most common heritable cause of hypercoagulability. Keep in mind that many, most likely questions are actually asking you for the most common cause. 73. A 12-year-old girl is admitted to the hospital because of marked shortness of breath, an erythematous rash, and painful swollen hip and knee joints. She is agitated. A chest x-ray shows an enlarged heart and changes consistent with pulmonary edema. Intractable congestive heart failure develops and she dies on the second hospital day. This child most likely had a recent history of which of the following? A. Cyanosis with chest pain, B. Jaundice, C. Meningitis, D. Pharyngitis, or E. Skin infection. The answer is D. Pharyngitis. This is rheumatic fever from group A strep pharyngitis. This is thankfully rare now as we routinely treat strep throat with antibiotics. The cause of all the damage is due to cross-reactivity of strep antigens with the tissues of the heart, joints, skin, and brain. Antistreptolysin O, or ASO, and anti-DNA titers will be high. 74. A population-based case control study is conducted to assess whether there is an association between statin use and incidence of colorectal cancer. A total of 900 participants are enrolled. 400 patients who were diagnosed with colorectal cancer between 1998 and 2004, and 500 healthy participants matched for age, sex, and ethnicity. A structured interview is used to determine statin use in the two groups. 
Results are shown. Which of the following is the estimated odds ratio of colon cancer in statin-treated patients compared with patients with no statin treatment? The table shown shows statin use positive, total of 300. Of these, colon cancer is present in 100 and absent in 200. Statin use negative, total of 600. Of these, colon cancer is present in 300 and absent in 300. In total, colon cancer is present in 400 and absent in 500 for the total of 900 participants. So again, which of the following is the estimated odds ratio of colon cancer in statin-treated patients compared with patients with no statin treatment? A, negative 1.0, B, negative 0 0.5, C, 0, D, 0 0.5, E, 0 0.67, F, 0 0.75, G, 1.3, or H, 2? The answer is D, 0 0.5. The odds ratio, if you don't simply have it memorized, is computed exactly as you would guess. It's the odds of you getting a disease with the treatment or risk factor over the odds of you getting a disease without the treatment or risk factor. In this case, 100 divided by 200, or 1 half, is divided by 300 divided by 300, or 1. Therefore, 1 half divided by 1 equals 1 half, or 0 0.5, the correct answer. 75. A five-year-old child with short stature is being evaluated for delayed dentition and excessive caries. Examination of the chest shows pectus carinatum and bead-like enlargement of the costochondral junctions. Which of the following findings is most likely on histologic examination of a section of bone? A. Absence of cartilage in the epiphyseal plates. B. Absence of osteoblasts. C enlarged osteoclasts with an increased number of nuclei, or D, increased proportions of osteoid? The answer is D, increased proportions of osteoid. This is rickets. Pectus carinatum is also known as pigeon chest or protruding sternum, and bead-like enlargement of the costochondral junctions is describing a rickettic rosary. Rickets is caused by vitamin D deficiency, either dietary or functional. Osteoblasts in patients with rickets lay down excess unmineralized osteoid as they are less able to mineralize osteoid into mature bone without sufficient vitamin D. 76. A 12-year-old boy is brought to the physician by his father because of redness and swelling of his left foot for 24 hours. Three days ago, the boy scraped his foot while wading in a drainage ditch. Examination of the left foot shows a purulent abrasion with edema, erythema, and tenderness on the lateral side. Infection is most likely to next spread from the lateral side of the foot to the regional lymph nodes in which of the following areas? A. Lateral surface of the thigh. B. Medial malleolus, posteriorly. C. Popliteal fossa, D, sole of the foot, or E, superficial inguinal area? The answer is C, popliteal fossa. Lymphatic spread of disease moves through lymphatic channels from distal to proximal. The medial side drains to the superficial inguinal nodes. Much of the lateral side will stop at the popliteal nodes prior to ascending into the thigh. 77. A 52-year-old man with recently diagnosed type 2 diabetes mellitus comes to the physician for a follow-up examination. Physical examination shows no abnormalities. Laboratory studies show an increased hemoglobin A1c despite patient compliance with diet and exercise recommendations. Treatment with a sulfonylurea is started. Which of the following is most likely to occur in this patient? A. Decreased entry of glucose into the muscle cells. B. Decreased production of glucose from the liver. C. 
decrease secretion of insulin from the pancreas, D, decrease speed of carbohydrate absorption from the intestines, E, increased entry of glucose into the muscle cells, F, increased production of glucose from the liver, G, increased secretion of insulin from the pancreas, or H, increased speed of carbohydrate absorption from the intestines. The answer is G, increased secretion of insulin from the pancreas. Sulfonylurea medications, such as glipizide or gliburide, stimulate the pancreas to secrete more insulin. Sulfonylureas bind to an ATP-sensitive potassium channel on the cell membrane of pancreatic beta cells. This inhibits a tonic, hyperpolarizing efflux of potassium, thus causing the electric potential over the membrane to become more positive. This depolarization opens voltage-gated calcium channels. The rise in intracellular calcium leads to increased fusion of insulin granulae with the cell membrane, and therefore increased secretion of proinsulin. For this reason, they are most efficacious early in the disease process when the pancreas still has remaining functional reserve. 78. A two-year-old boy is brought to the emergency department because of shortness of breath and left-sided abdominal pain for three hours. He appears pale. Physical examination shows hypotension and tachycardia. There is splenomegaly with the spleen tip palpated 8 centimeters below the left costal margin. Laboratory studies show hemoglobin 5.1, hematocrit 16, leukocyte count 4,500, platelet count 87,000. A photomicrograph of a right stained peripheral blood smear is shown. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient's current condition? A. Aplastic crisis. B. Autoimmune hemolysis. C. Congestive heart failure. D. Salmonella sepsis. Or E. Splenic sequestration. The answer is E. Splenic sequestration. The peripheral blood smear given shows sickled red blood cells. Left upper quadrant pain on test questions almost always means splenic pathology. All sickle cell kids will eventually infarct their spleen due to sickle cell crises. Repeated splenic infarctions lead to a non-functional spleen or autosplenectomy. 79. A 73-year-old woman comes to the physician because of a two-month history of diffuse weakness and tingling of her arms and legs. Neurologic examination shows weakness of the extensor and flexor muscles of the lower extremities. Knee and ankle deep tendon reflexes are exaggerated. Sensation to vibration and position is decreased in all extremities, but the decrease is more prominent in the lower extremities than in the upper extremities. This patient most likely has a deficiency of which of the following vitamins? A. Niacin B. Vitamin B1 or thiamine, C. Vitamin B2 or riboflavin, D. Vitamin B6 or pyridoxine, or E. Vitamin B12 or cyanocobalamin. The answer is E. Vitamin B12 or cyanocobalamin. Subacute combined degeneration or progressive peripheral sensory and motor loss is a late sign of B12 deficiency, which is common in old people. On board exams, a geriatric patient who lives alone and may have a quote-unquote tea and toast diet is likely to have vitamin deficiencies, particularly of folate and B12. 80. In a cohort study of elderly women, the relative risk ratio for hip fractures among those who exercise regularly is 1.2, with a 95% confidence interval of 1.1 to 1.8. Which of the following is the most appropriate conclusion about the effect of regular exercise on the risk for hip fracture? A. Statistically non-significant increase in risk. B. Statistically non-significant overall decrease in risk. C. Statistically significant overall decrease in risk. Or D. Statistically significant overall increase in risk? The answer is D. 
statistically significant overall increase in risk. An odds ratio greater than 1 signifies increased odds, risk, and likelihood. If the 95% confidence range does not include 1, then the difference is statistically significant, though not necessarily clinically meaningful. 81. A 32-year-old man with non-Hodgkin lymphoma comes to the physician six days after finishing the initial chemotherapy regimen. His leukocyte count is 1,600, indicating greater bone marrow suppression than expected. When questioned, the patient says that he has been taking Madagascar periwinkle as an herbal remedy for his condition. He obtains this substance from an herbalist. Which of the following is the most appropriate response by the physician? A. Ask the patient to stop using the herbal supplement because supplements are generally ineffective. B. Continue the patient's chemotherapy. C. Explain the adverse effects this herbal supplement has on the patient's treatment. D. Report the herbalist to the Food and Drug Administration. Or E. Suggest that the patient take daily multivitamin and protein supplements in addition to the herbal supplement. The answer is C. Explain the adverse effects this herbal supplement has on the patient's treatment. Common sense is key, particularly for counseling type questions. Patients have autonomy and can do whatever they want. It is your job as a physician to explain the risks and benefits. The patients ultimately will make their own treatment decisions. 82. A 16-year-old girl has hirsutism, deepening of the voice, and cessation of menses. She swims in competitions. Which of the following drugs is most likely to have caused these findings? A. Ethanol estradiol B. Luprolide C. Medroxyprogesterone D. Nandrolone or E. Tamoxifen the answer is D, nandrolone. She is taking anabolic or androgenic steroids as performance-enhancing drugs. An athlete on step one is often a buzzword that should prompt consideration of inappropriate drug use. 83. A 55-year-old man comes to the physician because of a two-week history of recurrent widespread blister formation. Physical examination shows lesions that are most numerous in the flexural areas, including the axilla and groin. The blisters do not break easily, and there are no oral lesions. These blisters are most likely the result of adhesion failure involving which of the following? A. Basement membrane B. Dermal papillae C. Langerhorn cells D. Melanocytes or E, Merkel cells? The answer is A, basement membrane. A new blistering disease in an older person is typically going to be a pemphigus question. Then you just have to remember the difference between bullous pemphigoid versus pemphigus vulgaris. Bullous pemphigoid is characterized by the loss of hemidesmosomes that bind ker keratinocytes to the basement membrane resulting in bulla, or big blisters, in areas of friction, choice A. Patients with pemphigus vulgaris lose their desmosomes, which bind keratinocytes to each other, so that their skin is super friable, which results in ulceration. Mouth ulcers are more common in pemphigus vulgaris. 84. A study is designed to evaluate the feasibility of acupuncture in children with chronic headaches. 60 children with chronic headaches are recruited for the study. In addition to their usual therapy, all children are treated with acupuncture three times a week for two months. Which of the following best describes the study design? A. Case control B. Case series C. Crossover D. Cross-sectional E. Historical cohort or F. Randomized clinical trial. The answer is B, case series. This is a prospective case series. There is no control and certainly no blinding as evidenced in the question.
85. A 33-year-old woman comes to the physician two days after the result of a home pregnancy test was positive. The result of a serum pregnancy test in the office is positive. She tells a physician that she enjoys seafood, but she has heard that some types can be bad for the baby. It is most appropriate for the physician to recommend that the patient avoid which of the following species of fish during her pregnancy. A. Catfish B. Cod C. Salmon D. Swordfish or E. Tilapia The answer is D. Swordfish Pregnant patients should avoid fish and seafood products that are high in mercury. In general, this means that shellfish and big saltwater fish should be avoided, such as tuna, swordfish, shark, king mackerel, tilefish, etc. 86. A 16-year-old boy is admitted to the emergency department because of a knife wound to the left side of his chest. An x-ray of the chest shows an air fluid level in the left side of the chest, partial collapse of the left lung, and elevation of the stomach bubble. The mediastinum is in the midline. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A. Hemoneumothorax, not under tension. B. Hemothorax, not under tension. C. Pneumothorax, not under tension. D. Tension hemoneumothorax, E. Tension hemothorax, or F. Tension pneumothorax. The answer is A. Hemoneumothorax, not under tension. Air plus fluid equals hydroneumothorax. If that fluid is blood, i.e. status post to stabbing, it is a hemoneumothorax. Lack of mediastinal shift indicates that this is not under tension. 87. A 45-year-old woman has a six-month history of progressive shortness of breath on exertion. She does not smoke. Pulmonary function findings are shown. Values are given as percent of predicted normal. Vital capacity, 60%. Forced expiratory volume in one second, or FEV1, 70%, diffusing capacity for carbon monoxide, 50%, maximum voluntary ventilation, 60%. Which of the following most likely explains her limited ability to increase ventilation? A. Airway obstruction. B. Decreased activation of pulmonary juxtacapillary or J receptors. C. Decreased lung compliance. D. Depression of central chemoreceptors, or E. Depression of peripheral chemoreceptors. The answer is C. Decreased lung compliance. In a middle-aged woman with progressive shortness of breath, think of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a restrictive lung disease. 88. A 74-year-old man with urinary frequency and urgency has benign prostatic hyperplasia. He refuses operative intervention but agrees to a trial of finasteride therapy. During the trial, synthesis of which of the following substances is most likely to be inhibited? A. Androstenedione B. Dihydrotestosterone C. Estradiol D. Estrone or E, testosterone? The answer is B, dihydrotestosterone. Finasteride, aka Propecia, is used for male pattern baldness and prostate hypertrophy. It's a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor which prevents the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone or DHT. 89. A 30-year-old man with peptic ulcer disease suddenly develops pain, redness, and swelling of his right first metatarsophalangeal joint. There is no history of injury. Serum uric acid concentration is 8 mg per deciliter. Examination of joint aspirate shows barfringent crystals. Which of the following drugs is most appropriate to treat the acute symptoms in this patient? A. 
allopurinol, B. colchicine, C. morphine, D. probenicid, or E. sulfenpyrazone. The answer is B. colchicine. Sudden onset pain, redness, swelling in the big toe with elevated uric acid is classic gout. Allopurinol helps prevent flares but does nothing to treat them. Treatments of choice for an acute flare are NSAIDs or colchicine. In this case, the answer is B, colchicine. 90. A 55-year-old man who is a business executive is admitted to the hospital for evaluation of abdominal pain. He is polite to the physician but berates the nurses and other staff. The patient's wife and two of his three adult children arrive for a visit. The patient says with disgust, the missing child is and always has been worthless. Which of the following is the most likely explanation for this patient's behavior? A. Countertransference B. Projection C. Projective identification D. Reaction formation or E. Splitting. The answer is E. Splitting. Splitting is an immature defense mechanism often employed by patients with borderline personality disorder. When splitting, a person fails to see others as capable of having both positive and negative qualities. At any given time, it's all or nothing. They are all good or all bad. 91. A 14-year-old girl is brought to the physician by her mother because of a two-month history of heavy vaginal bleeding during menstrual periods. She has had episodes of excessive periodontal bleeding while brushing her teeth and easy bruising for six years. She also had an episode of extended bleeding after a tooth extraction four years ago. Her mother and brother have had similar symptoms. Physical examination shows patchy ecchymoses over the upper and lower extremities. Laboratory studies show platelet count of 234,000, bleeding time 17 minutes, prothrombin time 12 seconds with an INR equal to 1, or partial thromboplastin time of 46 seconds. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A. Factor 7 or proconvertin deficiency. B. Factor 10 or Stewart factor deficiency. C. Factor 12, or Hageman factor deficiency. D, hemophilia A. E, vitamin K deficiency. Or F, von Willebrand disease. The answer is F, von Willebrand disease. Prolonged bleeding time with normal clotting factors, as evidenced by normal PT slash INR and PTT, and a sufficient platelet count is going to be von Willebrand disease the most common hereditary coagulation abnormality, which by either deficiency or mutation results in dysfunctional platelets. A temporary treatment for uncontrolled bleeding is vasopressin, which causes additional von Willebrand factor release. Factor 8 concentrate is a more dramatic and more effective treatment, as it also contains von Willebrand factor. 92. A previously healthy 40-year-old man is brought to the emergency department because of constant substernal chest pain for 12 hours that is exacerbated by coughing and inspiration. The pain is relieved with sitting up and leaning forward. There is no family history of heart disease. His temperature is 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, pulse is 120 per minute, and blood pressure is 110 over 60. The lungs are clear to auscultation. Cardiac examination shows distant heart sounds. An EKG shows diffuse ST segment elevation in all leads. An X-ray of the chest shows normal findings. The most likely cause of his condition is injury to which of the following tissues? A. Aortic intima. B. Esophageal sphincter. C. Myocardium. D. Pericardium. Or E. Plura. The answer is D, pericardium. Diffuse low-level ST elevation means pericarditis. 
These patients have distant heart sounds and they often complain of pleuritic chest pain, which is somewhat alleviated by sitting up and leaning forward. Common test causes include viruses, uremia, and occurrence two to three weeks after myocardial infarction or Dressler syndrome. Thank you very much for listening. Please leave comments and suggestions. Good luck.